Welcome students. Today we're going to be talking about igneous rock textures and I'm joined this afternoon by three students so I'd like them to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Shiza. I'm Jasmine. And you Michelle. Great. So what we're going to be doing today is taking you through the identification of igneous rock textures. So why is this important? When you're identifying igneous rocks, there are really two things that you need to be able to identify. One of them is texture, and the second thing is composition. The texture is the most important, because if you get the texture wrong, you cannot get the rock name correct. But this isn't all about rock names. This is more about being able to determine the kind of environment that these rocks were formed in, so that we can figure out how they formed, or we can look at Maybe there might be some ores or other valuable things associated with the rocks. So we really want to be able to get them correct. And to do that, we have to know the texture of them. So to help us out, I made a texture flow chart for us. And if you use this flow chart, and you use it for each and every igneous rock that you identify, if you get that idea down, you're going to get the texture of each and every rock correct first try. Okay? Okay. You guys ready to try and walk through this with me? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's pick a sample rock. Which one would you like to work on first? Like you like that one. All right, we'll pick this nice shiny black rock. All right, so each person has one of these pieces of black shiny rock. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the texture flow chart. So here's how we do it. The first thing on here says, ask yourself, does the rock have crystals? <laughs> So if we pick this rock up and look at it, can we see anything that looks like <coughs> crystals no. No. in this rock? Oh, well, no. No, right? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on our texture flow chart, where are we going to go? To the no part. We're going to go to the no part. What's the second question that we're going to ask ourselves? Are the grains fragments or glassy? Okay. So what do you think? Do you see fragments? What are fragments? Like little pieces? Right, little pieces. Do you see little pieces here, or is this glassy? It's glassy. It's glassy. Good. So now where are we going to go? Down to the fragments. Yeah. No, now we're going to go the other side, to glassy. And this is a really easy one. I'm glad you picked this first, because this one has a texture that we're going to call glassy. All right? So this rock, which when you picked it up at first, you might have even said, oh, that looks like a piece of broken glass. This rock has a texture that we are going to call glassy. Okay? Simple, right? Mm -hmm. All right, second rock. Which one would you like to do next? Which is what you pick? That one? Okay. That's a nice one to pick. All right, so where do we start? Um, if it has crystals or not. Yeah. So this is the one you're going to be looking at. Do you have one too? Which one? Right here. That one? Okay. What do you think? Can you see crystals on that rock? No. Mm, I don't know. I don't think it's so. What do you think these dark kinda, colored pieces are? It kind of looks like it's crystalline when you move it. Yeah. Like it has like well, like like a little shiny spots. Maybe it's crystals. So I think we're seeing some black or dark colored gray pieces and some white pieces. And they look like maybe if you think about pieces in a jigsaw puzzle, that they're grown together. They interlock with each other. Can you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, those would be the crystals that we're looking at. So on our flow chart, where do we go next? Uh, yes, we have crystals. What's our second question? Are the crystals all similar in size, or are there two different um, green sizes, green okay. sizes? Good. So we have two different color crystals here, right? We've got some dark gray ones and some white ones. See if you can tell if they're about the same size or if there are some that are much larger and some that are much smaller. What do you think? Are they about the same size? They look bigger and smaller. Yeah, they don't look like the same yeah, size. Yeah. Some yeah. of them look... They look like two different sizes? Yeah. Okay. So is that one of our choices, two different sizes? Yeah. It is mm -hmm. on the flow chart. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next question that we're going to ask ourselves is, is the ground mass large enough to identify? Okay, now we have a problem because we don't know what that word means, ground mass, do we? No. <laughs> All right. So when we're talking about different crystals and having two different sizes in crystals, we use two different words. One is called ground mass, and the other one is called phenocryst. All right? 
The way I remember which is which is phenocryst. That crisp part reminds me of a crystal. And I'm going to think, oh, crystal, that's probably big. The ground mass is the part that's small. So if we have two different size crystals, the bigger crystals are called phenocrysts, and the ground mass are the smaller crystals that surround the bigger crystals. Okay? So look at your rock again and see. You've got some bigger crystals. Which color are the bigger ones? The black or the white? Black. The black ones, right? Mm -hmm. And then the white ones are surrounding them. They're interlocked, intergrown with them. The white ones here would be the phenocrysts. Or so, I'm sorry, would be the ground mass. So the dark color ones are the phenocrysts, and the light color ones are the ground mass. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So now our question is, is the ground mass large enough to identify? And the way we want to think about this is, without using a microscope, could you see the light color ground mass crystals and tell what kind of mineral they are, or are they too small to tell what kind of mineral they are? I think you wouldn't tell without a microscope. You wouldn't tell without a microscope? Good. I agree yeah. with you on that. So, ground mass large enough to identify? The answer is no. So we're going to identify the texture of this rock as something that we're going to call porphyritic, meaning it has two different crystal sizes, and aphanitic. And we'll talk about the specific definition of that when we get to the next segment. So for right now, we're learning how to use the flowchart, and we'll talk about that specific definition. But for right now, porphyritic and aphanitic. That means we have two different crystal sizes. The phenocrysts are the large one, and the ground mass is too small to identify. Okay? Let's put that one aside. No. Let's go on to, how about this light color, kind of a gray color rock. All right? Let's do this one next. So we're going back up to the top of our flow chart, and we're asking ourselves, does this rock have crystals? Now, do crystals have to be so big that we can see them, or could there be crystals that we could only see under a microscope? You could see them under a microscope. We could see them under a microscope. You're right. Mm -hmm. So in this case, this rock does have crystals, but they're very small. So let's follow the flow chart along. It has crystals, yes. Mm -hmm. Are all the crystals the same size? No. Can you see any much larger crystals in this one? Yeah. Like there's some like that. Maybe. Okay. You're right. There are just a couple of them that are bigger. But for the most part, are they all the same size? Yeah. Okay. If there are just one or two larger crystals, we're going to say that these are all pretty much the same size. <coughs> okay? Okay. And then the next question is, are the crystals big enough to identify without a microscope? No. No, they're not. All right, so we have a rock that has crystals. They are all about the same size, but they're very small. We can't identify what mineral they are without a microscope. In that case, this rock would have a texture that we're going to call aphanitic. All right, this is an aphanitic texture. Okay? Let's go on to the rock that looks like this. You got it? Yep, that one. All right. So, what do you guys think? Can you do the flow chart by yourself? <coughs> What's the first question? Does it have crystals? What do you think? Yeah. Yes, it does. All right. What's the second question? Um, are the crystals all similar in size, or are they two different green sizes? What do you think? I think they're <coughs> different. Yeah, I think yeah. They're all different. They're different it's sizes. Which ones are bigger? The which color? I think the, the light brown ones. The black. Oh, well, I'm not the sure. light ones. Yeah. Hmm. Well, in some of them, they tend to be whiter. Some of them, they tend to be light brown. So here's one of the large crystals, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's another of the large crystals. Here's another. <coughs> and you can see that the dark crystals are much smaller. So they have crystals. They're large enough to identify, but they are two different sizes, correct? The big ones are called the phenocrysts. Again, the small ones are called the ground mass. So now we know that this rock is similar in texture to the rock that we did earlier because it has two different grain sizes. But in this rock, all of the crystals are large enough to identify. In this one, the ground mass was too small to identify. 
So this rock is also porphyritic, meaning it has two different grain sizes, mm -hmm. but it's porphyritic in a texture we call phaneritic. The phaneritic part means that we can identify the crystals in it. Okay? So we are going to do one more here, and it's going to be this one. <coughs> Grab this one. And this one is probably one of the trickiest ones to do. So let's go through the flow chart together. Do you think this rock has crystals? No. 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 Nope. Good call. So no. What's our second question on the no, it doesn't have crystals? If it's um, glassy. No. Is it fragments or is it glassy? So are you feeling like you're rubbing off little yeah, bits of it? Do you feel like it's falling off on your hands? It is. Okay, and when we looked at the glassy rock, that one was not falling off on your hands, right? No. So this is a fragmental rock. And in fact, the texture here is fragmental. And what this <coughs> rock is made up of is this rock is made up of ash that has been welded together or stuck together after it erupted from a volcano. So the texture of this rock is fragmental. All right? Okay. We have one more little bit of terminology that we need to cover. If you have a nice piece of this rock, it's very, very light in weight. That would be that one. Uh, yep. Do you feel how light this rock is? You look at it, you look at its yeah. size, and you think it should be heavier than this. What's different about this rock than the other ones? Can you see anything if you look very closely at it? It looks kind of like dried bone marrow. It looks like dried bone marrow? Yeah. What makes it look like dried bone marrow? It has like little holes everywhere. Absolutely. It has little tiny holes. And those little tiny holes are holes that we call vesicles. And vesicles form when gas escapes from lava from an erupting volcano. That's the gas kind of popping a bubble. So that's what a vesicular and glassy texture would look like. Okay? <clears throat> How do you guys feel about using that texture flow chart? Good. Is that going to help you? Yeah. All right. You want to try it with one more rock? I'm going to turn you guys loose on this beautiful slab right here. See what you can do. Okay, so does, does it, it have crystals? I think it does. Yeah. So then yes. Mm -hmm. um, are, are the crystals, crystals all similar or are there two different grains sizes? I think they're different. Yeah. Which mm. ones are bigger if they're different? I think these ones. Do you agree? I think so, yeah. Because the black yeah. ones are obviously a lot smaller than the others. Jasmine, you agree? Um, he, no. Yeah. Okay. Where do we go next? Yeah, two different sizes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two different sizes. Okay, then? Um, ground mass large enough to identify. Okay. So is it hard enough to identify? So we're talking now about the black crystals, the white crystals, mm -hmm. the ones that are surrounding the larger gray crystals. Are they big enough to see? Yeah, yeah I yeah. think so too. All right, so this one would be a texture that we're going to call porphyritic and phaneritic. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Questions about using the flowchart? No. All right, nice job, you guys. In the next segment, you're going to be learning about the definitions of those specific different types of textures. So, good job. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>